Good morning, everybody. Um, let's, um, I'm going to start the board meeting for um, March 15, 2018. Uh, I'll, I'll start the, uh, the board meeting by introducing myself. I'm going to go around the room and introduce everybody here who's in the room. Um, I'm Mark Chadoff, uh, board chair and property owner in the district. Lisa Hill, the vice chair, property owner. Jessica Lewinstein and Jack Fashion Buildings in the Orphan District. Brian Tabon, property owner, board member. Matthew Havering, property owner, board member. Yul Kwan, Korean apparel manufacturer, and board member. Lori Rosen, property owner, board member. Suzette Wachtel, property owner, board member. Mary Sale, property owner, board member. <laughs> Sorry, hi, um, Lily Gross, uh, Council Member Weezer's office, and Joelle Hopkins is described. Sure. Randall Tampa with the Fashion District. Can you introduce yourself? Sure. Hi. Hey. Excuse me? Hey. Oh, can you introduce yourself? Not today, thanks. Hi, Joella. Hi, Joella. Um, everyone, you all met Lily. I think at the last meeting from the city council um, office. And this is Joella Hopkins, and she's new, so welcome. Hi, hi New hi. with ish. ish. Yes. Um, also with um, Jose Wizard's office. So thank you for coming. Thank you. Okay. All right. Welcome, everybody. Uh, and miss anybody, right? We, we, yeah. Did you? Okay. All right. So um, let's start with item one on the agenda um, any public comment? Does anybody want to say anything while we're all here? Okay. All right. No public comment. Let's move on to uh, uh, section three, which is tab one, which is the minutes dated February 15, 2018. Back. Okay. I move to approve. Okay. We have a motion to approve. We need a second. I'll second. Second. Okay. All right. Um, any, any comments, corrections about the minutes? Uh, okay, I'm going to call for a vote to approve the minutes as it is, as stated for uh, Thursday, February 15, 2018. All in favor? Any abstentions? Any opposed? Okay, the minutes passed. Okay, um, item four, we're expecting Captain Lena, but he's not here yet, so why don't we move on to uh, the bid renewal report. Okay, well. Pick that up and pull Lena. We are doing very well as of today. We are up to 43.6% with a few more promises. So we're hoping to get the rest of those. Um, do you want anybody, get any names to try to help with any calls or what we're I doing? Just, yeah. I just wanted to thank everybody to date. Um, the board and the renewal committee have done an amazing job of getting in the petitions, it's only been three weeks, I think. We're at 43, what did you say? 0.6%, so thank you. Um, we have a, a couple of uh, larger owners that are still um, outstanding, and um, several of them municipal type agencies, but they have all said they will sign. It's just a matter of timing. Um, we have until um, an odd, sort of a, a date of April 1st is when the city would like us to be finished so that we can stay on target and get the ballots out. So I'll be keeping up with my three day a week update to you all. And if you see anybody on that list who you can make a phone call to, we would appreciate it. And we are uh, we're ahead of where we were the last time of renewal at this point. So that's good, but the last few percent seems to be always how hard are the date of uh, April 1st? Right. If we're not at 50, like, how much more time do we have? I don't know. I don't think it's a hard date, but there is there is a, a couple of things in play. So once the ballots go out, they are out for 45 days. That's an actual, like, that is a hard number. And then it has to go before the city council. And everything, um, in order to be included on the county tax bill, the tax rolls have to be in by August 1st. So there's this window of time in the summer 
like from June to August when we would be wanting to go before city council for approval. And there are dates there that are determined by various council recesses, et cetera. So I think the city clerk just tries to keep us on target so we don't get past that and then cause an issue with billing with the county. I think we're gonna get there though. By April 30th. Yeah, I do, we have two weeks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll look through the list and if there is anybody, especially people who have supported us in the past, to be able to get, because it could be a, an issue of, like I, I recognized a name, I called, and he's no longer at that business, so his phone number's not correct, his email's not correct, so there could be situations like that. You can give the office a call, Reno or Bay, and let them know, and then they'll do more research to try to find the correct information on that. So thank you, everybody, for all your hard work. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you for the report. Okay, let's move on to operations. Um, Lori Sell. I can do it. <laughs> well, <laughs> Randall's here, so he can and do I, it too. I did notice the, uh, the tree trimming. Yeah, yeah, it just started yeah. today. In fact, Jackie today. just texted me right this very second, no, a picture. Yeah. Um, so the tree trimming began today. And um, if you want to know the schedule, um, email me and or Jackie and we can get it for you. For you. But they started over on San Pedro. It'll take probably 30 days to complete 700 plus trees. Um, and they, they don't work in the rain. So like they might not have come if it had continued to rain. So that could kind of cause some issues the next couple of days we're expected to have rain. Um, but that's happening. The um, trash hauling, I reported last, last month that um, we are not part of the recycle program. Um, the, and that the operations team, Randall and Elmer, have been working really hard with um, NASA representatives to try to decrease the number of merchant trash bags that, that show up on the sidewalk and in our trash cans. Um, and we, so we have not seen a decrease in that merchant trash yet. Um, perhaps during, as, as Recicla continues to roll out and NASA, continues to talk to individual businesses, we'll see a decrease. We're actually up 5% in our trash tonnage from January 2018 to 20, from 2017. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll keep monitoring that. We, we're hoping to see a decrease from the bids perspective on numbers. Did you wanna add anything else that we talked about? Or Randall, did you wanna add anything else? Just one thing to be aware of, and if you have some tenants, uh, well, I'll tell you what's going on right now. Since the beginning of the year, we've had an individual lighting fires in the south end of the district. Um, on Tuesday, we had our operations committee meeting and just before the meeting, this individual had um, started three fires, one at 11th and Maple, and then he kind of went up to Santee. We were a half step behind him and we had tenants and merchants telling us and describing this guy to us and we finally caught up to him we didn't see him lighting a fire unfortunately uh, because when the police got there they needed one of the tenants to say they actually saw this guy he's an older white guy disheveled so probably a transient and he had a pocket full of lighters and um, that was just three fires in one day but i'd say in the last couple of weeks we've probably had Oh, close to two dozen. And we've been real fortunate because most of the fires have been in our trash receptacles or trash on the street. And in one case, it was a 20 yard roll off that was under a building. And our safety team smelled it, got there, saw it, and they wheeled the trash bin out. They actually burned their hands. Uh, but the fire department got there, put it out, told them to put mustard on their hands. I guess that's the new uh, cure for for minor burns, but um, but what I wanted to, what I wanted to say was um, yeah there you go it's a it's a French fire but but reassure your tenants that they probably wouldn't be going to court on this and I think people become intimidated by the fact that if I 
say, yes, this is the guy that started the fire. I'm going to be in court for months. It won't be like that at all. It, it very rarely is like that. But, um, but it, it would have taken one of maybe four or five of the people that actually saw this guy lighting fires to, uh, to comment on. Now, since Tuesday, we've had four more fires, all in that same area. And we're playing this game with this guy. Uh, we haven't seen him start. He's, he's pretty, pretty sneaky, but we're looking for him. We're, we're hoping to catch him in the act or, or around the fire as it starts so we can then our, ourselves uh, be the witness to it and then uh, have the police department do something. But their hands on these type of matters uh, because it's trash, it's, it's, it's an arson, but it's not a burning of a building or structure or personal property, it's trash. So it falls into that misdemeanor category. So um, it requires a witness that actually sees this thing occur. So, How many did we have last year? It was enormous. Well, last year we had a guy doing it and he set 23 fires we himself. We had 70 fires last year. Yeah. So, and, and that's the big issue right now with the fire department. The fire department has us filling out forms so they can pinpoint it. There have been so many fires down here. Uh, we met with the chief of the fire department, hey Mark, that uh, they have a truck that isn't at a station, it's rolling. Come on in. And uh, they say they can respond and be anywhere in downtown in five minutes, which we've called them three times in the last couple of weeks and they've gotten here in just minutes. And I'll leave it at that if you want to yeah. have the captain take yeah. it. Can I just quickly ask you which, which corner of 11th and um, It was on the southwest corner. And then he went up and hit the south east corner and then he went southbound on Santee all the way down to 15th and 16th where he started the other fires. Uh, they commented on your alley and your gates and said what a great idea yeah. because they saw the scorched buildings too. Yeah. So and we're working with other people now to hopefully uh, I'd like to take this moment and, and welcome Mark uh, and to uh, our board meeting and thank you. I do. Thank you for coming in and taking time out of your busy day to join us. Thanks for having me. Yes. So, no further ado. Oh, well, thanks. <laughs> uh, I like coming here. So. I, don't get, I get a little busy sometimes. I, I miss it, but I enjoy coming here. So, um, thanks for having me. I just wanted to give you a couple updates, um, answering the questions you have. Uh, I know everyone likes the crime stats when we talked about them before. So, um, so far, so good this year in the fashion district. Your, your violent crime is down by 18 crimes, which is fantastic, and your property is down year to date by 26. Oh. So we had a rough year last year. Um, you ended up with 258 uh, violent crimes with aggravated assault being the highest. And um, you, had a, you had a rough year last year with uh, burglary from vehicles, people breaking into cars. All around fashion, all around South Park uh, seems to be the trend. Um, the issue we talked about before in these meetings that people leave everything in their car thinking it's going to be safe. I have 10 on my windows or that kind of thing, they'll take everything. Backpacks, computers, camera equipment, you name it, they take it. Um, and people are leaving that stuff there. Suitcases on the back seat, um, thinking it's gonna be okay. So we always ask when we go to these meetings, <coughs> that educational piece for everyone in the in your communities that they have to put the stuff under the seats, they out of sight, um, you have to lock it up in the trunk because they will take it. Um, and they're doing that. So. And they did that uh, 199 times last year. Uh, and another 217 thefts which could be leaving my phone at the coffee bean counter and walking away and you come back and it's gone. I have my laptop there. Um, some of those are our homeless thefts. The, the homeless population does get their stuff taken too and they, they report that as a theft, but a lot of them are unattended property where you leave it and you walk away for a few minutes thinking it's okay and it's gone, so. Uh, but again, uh, your violent crime is down uh, 18 crimes year to date compared to last year down 26 with your property. So we're having a good good year. We kind of moved some resources around. Um, hopefully you're seeing the bikes a little more. They're, they're working historic into fashion um, continuously. We have 10 bike officers <coughs> that are out there, so they split up. Um, <coughs> hopefully you're seeing them more in the fashion district and that's having an impact. And our missions, what we call our mission sheets, uh, every week we look at our crime stats and we give our patrol officers a mission and what they're supposed to work. And um, it's been overlapping between kind of the corner of Skid Row, Fashion District, and Historic, where the bulk of our, our uh, offices are going. So we're hoping to have an impact overall crime. 
Uh, marijuana clinics come up. Uh, we've had two uh, search warrants in marijuana clinics in Fashion District. Uh, I think it was 14th in LA, and um, I can't recall the other one. And a lot of uh, marijuana, these are illegal marijuana clinics. So we all know that they can have the illegal ones. You have to go through a proper permitting process, but what we find is a uh, very lucrative business. They like to grab the, the storefront, they set up shop, they make tons of money, um, they're not paying taxes on, and when they get hit by us, the cavalier attitude of them is amazing. It's like, well, whatever, charge me if you want. Um, I'll be back in business. If they find another storefront, they do the same thing. Uh, the problem with that is we notice with our crime statistics, if, if this is a marijuana clinic that's illegal, you'll see all the thefts and all the street robberies around that area that are increasing. When that's taken away, then it drops and then goes to the next location we see that. So what that's about growing? As far as uh, growing uh, harvesting? Uh, we haven't seen it here. A lot of those are in the warehouses going into the Newton area where they're, they have the uh, the big grows that would use the warehouse. But um, we had one here uh, in fashion a while back where semi-decent, uh, where they got a lot of plants out of, but the bigger ones where it's the entire warehouse yeah. with uh, you know, 100, $200,000 type uh, ventilation systems in there. Um, those are in the new area. You'll see that with the bigger warehouses. Is growing legal? It's, it depends on what you're, if you're licensed and permitted to do it. So if you think about the, uh, the legalized marijuana clinics, where are they getting the marijuana from? So there's a licensing process with the state to be able to grow, but a lot of them, again, it's so lucrative to go ahead and, and uh, rent a warehouse somewhere that's an abandoned warehouse, bring in your systems and your ventilation and your growing systems and harvest all that, that marijuana and sell it out uh, tax-free and they're, they're making hundreds of thousands of dollars very quickly. So. But in, within the city of LA, where they're if they're permitted, they're licensed and licensed, they are allowed to grow. Because I think last year at some point the whoever came to talk to us said, "Not in LA." Uh, you know, city. no, in the new in the new law. In the law now, in the new law, it's permitted. How do you know which what is illegal and illegal well, that's, operation? That's is there a map? So, is there? It, it's constantly changing, and our gang and narcotics division for this for the department is the lead on that because. What will happen is if we, uh, if you report this, hey, we think this is an illegal grow, this is an illegal clinic, we get the information, we run it, we, we vet it through them, whether or not they're in the process of permitting it, or whether they're per permitted or not, and then we move forward on it. But it's constantly changing. Um, sometimes they'll have an illegal one and we, we arrest you, and then they'll go get one and they're actually doing the permits for it, but then they have another legal one over here. So they kind of, they play the game, the cat and mouse game. So um, it's kind of tough to determine. Um, until we get the information and vet it out whether it's supposed to be there or not. And the laws are, are constantly changing the rules for the city. Even though they came and said, yeah, you can have legalized marijuana clinics or, or dispensaries where you can sell it, the, the rules are constantly changing. We're still trying to understand it too. And, and the Prop D medical marijuana places that are eventually going to be able to get an actual permit for all marijuana sales, those are still in operation while this transition is happening. And aren't they supposed to have their <laughs> doors? Aren't you supposed to be able to see them? Well, I don't yeah. think, I, yeah. I mean, I don't, Captain Reyna wouldn't, the, P, the yeah. PD wouldn't be the people who enforce that. Yeah. Okay. So it would be yeah, building and safety or like that, you know, that somebody like that. Already, so. I have a quick question. Not, a lot of people come looking for space and they, they say they want to be able to do that or to have it grow or to mm -hmm. manufacture or this and that. And we're, we, we're, we're permanent. How does one check to see if they actually are? And who does it? So there's a lieutenant, I can give you an email address. Please don't inundate him with uh, a lot of emails if possible. But I'll, his name is Stacy Spell, and he is the uh, department. S P E L L? Yeah, so Stacy, S T A C Y, Spell, S P E L L. He's a lieutenant with Gang and Narcotics. And uh, I can. I can give you that information. Why don't you it. give it to me and or then I'll send it out. Or we can have him come and talk. You want to do that? Yeah, that would be awesome, actually. Okay. All right. Okay. And um, so he's the expert, and his team are the ones that, that vet that out, whether or not they're from it. And if you have questions, if someone's you know going to uh, you know, rent your space and all of a sudden you know a team is serving a warrant there six months later, you don't want that. Of course. Okay. Um, what else? I wanted to give you some uh, ideas of where uh, the crime is occurring in this part, um, all along 6th Street, all along 7th Street, and 9th Street, uh, where you've seen the bulk of your crime. So, um, 
to it. And then uh, um, spraying coming into Cassidy down, down Spring Street. So uh, other crimes are kind of scattered uh, around, but that's where you see the majority of those, uh, those, uh, those thoroughfares. Between Nathan Spring, they're going to punish you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really? so, uh, yeah, East West Corridors. Yeah, what are the cross streets? Okay, so you're going, um, and this may this may jet out of, of fashion a little bit into the others. It's kind of hard the way we do our mapping to, to just get the uh, fashion district uh, boundaries. But uh, you're looking at Sixth Street from uh, San Pedro uh, down to Spring. You're looking at uh, seventh from Pedro to Spring. You're looking at Spring from six down to a uh, little past ninth, Ninth Street from uh, Maple over to Hill, um, and they kind of spread it down. So because they come so, in and they just they hit, it's yeah, it's so walk in the slot. For the majority of that is is mm -hmm. in your the northern part of yeah. the district. So which All is the, which probably is, a lot of homeless crime on crime yeah. homeless on homeless crime. And see that you know, and then two the, boots left their window a little open in the class weekend, and they almost guys just like crawled into the front window. But you guys can really pick it. Um, okay, what else? Uh, <coughs> the talk about us taking over a good portion of uh, fashion and just go bid that is 95% there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We know that, and we've talked about it before, the border with Newton is kind of jagged, right? It makes it very difficult. Um, the issues that you have on our side, essentially, you have on the Newton side. Um, we often, our, our reset team or our homeless teams or bike teams are going in with narcotics and working in Newton. It just makes it simpler, I think, for accounting purposes to kind of section that off along the 10th freeway. The border is basically the 10th freeway uh, heading east. It just kind of jets up a little bit and then ends over where it does for us at that LA River. So we are gonna take on when that happens, all those crime stats. Um, right now at this point, um, I don't know if they're gonna, if they were trying to do it soon so we can incorporate those crime stats and they redo our numbers to see if we're up in crime as a division or down. Um, but if you look at Newton Division's property crime map, um, the northern part of it is just blanketed with color codes because of the property crime. So when that happens, I'm gonna take on all that crime. But we're hoping with the way we deploy and the officers that they're going to give us uh, to assist, um, and we're, we're that's the battle right now is they give us a number of whether or not we're we're good if we need a little bit more. Uh, it's going to be appropriate to handle all that crime the way we want to handle it. Uh, so, but I can promise you that you'll when that does happen, um, central officers are going to be very attentive to the needs of fashion and industrial as you go across from from west to east. So. Do we have an idea, 95%? You know, it's supposed to have gone through uh, a month or two ago. I know Chief Moore in operations had some questions. He sent it back. Um, the project is probably 30 pages long with graphs and charts and, and all sorts of neat stuff in there um, that they do um, in the Chief's office. Um, they just want to kind of vet out a few things uh, to make sure, again, once they, they hit the send button and we're ready to go, that it's an appropriate amount of officers and how they're going to transition, they're going to change the reporting districts for us, the basic cars for us. Um, I know we're going to get one of the senior lead officer positions, uh, which will come to Central, and hopefully I'm able to pick a senior lead that will work that area, um, that uh, I can handpick through the interview process that I know will work hard for that area. Jamila will stay here, obviously, in this area. It may get a little, she may get a little bit more, we'll just have to redistrict it, but she'll still be uh, for the bulk of uh, fashion district. So. So when the dust settles, I'll know more, but it's it's right there. I think mm -hmm. we're just kind of fine tuning it before. It's a big project. It's a yeah. very uh, uh, very involved logistically to make sure it all works. And, and then you have to get into uh, vehicles and equipment and lockers and all that kind of thing to move people over. So it's, there's a lot to it. This is it like a six month thing, 12 month thing? Like I'm hoping within a month or two. Oh, uh, maybe I'll know more You know, within a couple weeks. I did send okay. some emails Great. yesterday for some updates. Um, in terms saying, of implementation. Uh, you know, the cartography group has to get involved and, and redistrict the maps. As you can imagine, let's say, for example, if Cash took on more, you'd have to redo all your maps and districts. Um, I know they're all involved in that. Um, where they are, each entity that's involved, at, I, I don't know. So they don't tell me a lot from the, the chief's okay. office. They tend to keep the projects tight. Um, but I, I've been told it's about 95% done. So. Okay. 
Wilkinson. Right? So Thank will you. the Newton division become smaller, or are they taking on a new smaller. area? Smaller. So they're not changing. Yeah. They're not adding anything. No. Okay. Make up for this loss. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So okay. so hopefully it works out soon, and, and I think uh, I think people can. We got a lot of uh, we part of this. We, we're about 80, 85 percent. They sent out a request for community input, and I reached out to you for that. And a lot of um, yeah, a know, lot of these people helped write yeah. a letter. Right. So all that was put together in a in a project sent to Chief Moore and Chief Beck uh, regarding thoughts on, on uh, we call it the takeover, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, a lot of positive feedback for us for Central, which is good. Uh, so I think that helped kind of push it through. Sorry, I stepped out. What are the Proposed new borders for Central. Uh, basically, you're going to go to the 10 freeway, so you're going to go 110 to the 10 across, um, just just uh, north of the 10 freeway, um, and they're trying to find a um, a good line, like you know, whether it's Washington, what, what what are they going to use to be that border, and then it just kind of jets up a little bit when you get towards the Arts District. <coughs> Back up to the border. We'll, we'll like the, up Alameda, are you thinking? Are you thinking? A little further. Or central. Even further east. A little further, yeah. We're going to get the Greyhound. Yeah, 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 so probably all the way over to oh, the. Oh, so you'll go all the way into the district. Arctic district. Wow. Mm -hmm. The river. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. great across mm -hmm. the natural good. borders in the sense of having the river as we have it right now for Central coming down. It just makes sense. Yeah. And we'll, we'll get the Greyhound bus. And Kathleen Rayna has been helpful in some of the boundary issues already, um, especially in the alleys, the Maple Alley project. It was thanks to Kathleen yeah, Rayna. I wanted to thank Kristen <laughs> Lloyd for all the help Central has given yeah. um, our district. They, there's always someone to talk to at Central. And just you guys have been so helpful with <coughs> serious problems that we've had chronically over the years. And I'm really excited that you guys are taking over. Good. Um, good news. And I, when this happens, um, you're going to see a, a robust change um, with visible officers out there. The, the contacts will be better, I believe, and uh, we're hoping we can move our reset team over, which are specializing in homeless issues, uh, or increase our what we call our west side detail outside of Skid Row that deal with all the other homeless issues in Central, increase that by a few officers so they can come in and start to deal with, with the, the homeless issues in the new that is extremely difficult right now. I just want to make that clear. Um, people, you know, call all the time and say, "Why aren't you dealing with that encampment? Why aren't you arresting them?" And, and the injunctions that they have, the court, the settlement that's going to occur soon with uh, the Mitchell case, the laws itself, um, the propositions that were passed that make nonviolent offenders in and out of jail quickly. Uh, I'll give an example. We, there was uh, four key arrests last night in Skid Row with uh, what we call chronic offenders and. They were booked, and two of them were out before they finished the arrest report yesterday. So uh, it's frustrating for the officers in that process, but they're non-violent offenders, so they came right back out. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that circle and that cycle that we're constantly dealing with when it comes to these things. So we do the best we can. It's, we're not criminalizing homeless. Do we arrest homeless people? We do uh, when they commit a crime. Um, we, we address it appropriately depending on the severity of the crime. Uh, but we are, we've made great strides in working with um, social services. When I got here over a year ago, there really wasn't any, uh, well, there's, uh, there was some with LASA, some with a couple other groups, but there really needed to be this collaborative effort. We worked with the council office tremendously, Joel and the, uh, putting the, the uh, uh, teams together and bringing them together, and Lily has been there with the, the meetings. Uh, and with the mayor's office, and we've really pushed that collaboration piece for, for months and months. Um, we voiced our concerns to the council office of what needed to be done to, to make that work, and they've stepped up and, and really helped with that. And I appreciate that, by the way. And um, we had that meeting yesterday, which I couldn't make, I apologize. It's okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And, uh, but having social services, whether it's LASA, C3, all these different uh, uh, agencies out there, these nonprofits that work, and some that are partially government funded, some are fully um, held accountable and work. Uh, LAPD cannot do this themselves. Sanitation, um, work work with us uh, to, to really address the issues. Um, because before, 
independent contractors all around and nobody was really talking to each other, no one's working with each other. Now they're <coughs> almost mandated to have these meetings and work with us and address problems and we're, we're making progress with that. So, so it's been, been good, so it's going in the right direction. So, but again, even with that, this is a massive um, undertaking of trying to deal with all these encampments and all these individuals and getting them the services they need and not having that rotation in and out of jail. Really that, that is Thank you. a fantastic report. Thank you. Any questions? Anything else? Anything else? You have a new captain? Uh, that's right, new captain. Uh, so Scott Harrelson, I think he's been here before, mm -hmm. and was promoted to Captain 3, he took over Security Services Division. And Security Services is a citywide division that handles uh, parks and libraries, municipal, municipal buildings, civil buildings, that kind of thing. So he has his hands full because he's going from the harbor to the uh, north end of the valley from the west side all around so um, all the issues let's say at the central library are, are his and mine too um, we work together on it but so he has officers and security officers and subcontractors security guards and all these facilities all around the city so he's the right person for it to, to take over james sand is just uh, retired uh, he's doing a great job and a lot of great strides already and uh, he's he's all over so uh, we got the zoo he has our all the, all the different issues that, <laughs> which, which and, and we did we did uh, give him give him some heat for that that he's got the zoo and so we'll get the free passes and the free cotton candy but, but, um, but that's a, it's a huge undertaking with all the, the ground he has to take over so orlando chandler is the new patrol captain he was just sworn in today uh, we'll bring him by the next meeting he's out with his family celebrating right now um, he used to work in central years ago as a senior lead officer and he's kind of done his rounds of different different units and different uh, departments with, within ours. And he came from Facilities Management Division, which oversees um, all our facilities and helps you know, the issues within buildings and contracts and things like that. So he's happy to be here and get the ground running and great asset for Central. So in the next meeting, we'll, we'll bring him over and introduce him. So. And what is his position? He's a patrol captain. And I would just like to make an announcement. I think we should all be aware of it, that this meeting is being videotaped. I think it should be disclosed. Okay. <clears throat> Any else? That's a wonderful report. Yeah, we're we're looking forward to it. Yeah. Like I said, the, the new, when we new regime, the new central division, I, I, I can say from a personal level, I, I can't wait. <laughs> I'm waiting. Okay. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and, and again, it's we have our challenges in central with with the uh, revitalization, the population, um, all the businesses and things coming in. You know, right now we're we have the most ABC locations of any division in the city. So bypass what, Hollywood. What is that mean? What is ABC? ABC. Uh, alcohol control. Oh, ABC. So, oh. Yeah. <laughs> so the most uh, places that sell yeah. out and serve <laughs> alcohol. Um, yeah. So it's. It's really booming down here with the, the restaurants yeah. and, the, and the businesses and things like that. So, and uh, I want to thank everyone for their understanding with Trump being in town and all the closures. I'm sure that affected traffic uh, for mm -hmm. quite a few blocks. I spent almost 38 straight hours over at the Intercontinental as part of the detail, oh my God. Um, um. making sure that that went off without a hitch and there's no issues. But um, the traffic was the biggest thing because yeah. all the closures. So. I apologize for it, but it's it's necessary to. It wasn't I probably would pretty well actually considering. Yeah. Yeah. I just avoided those areas, so I didn't yeah. get impacted. Yeah. Yeah. Well, our district didn't get as much. But impact, even coming but in, coming in in the morning was. Well, it took some morning. people. Yeah. Like forty-five minutes longer well, than wow. normal to come in. <laughs> what meetings yeah. I was in, but you know, I mean, it is what it is. There was a, I don't know if you were, there was, we had a bomb threat yesterday, or? Suspicious package. Suspicious package. Oh. Where? Uh, where? San Joy between a and Really? Yeah. I yeah. didn't even know they that. They took the So that ended up um, being a... It was a guy got fired at the wire. It, it's, it wasn't a device, it looked like a device, and um, the individual had some personal issues, um, which we're getting some help for right now, but I don't know if, and nobody was in harm's way at all. And a lot of times we'll have individuals uh, may suffer from mental illness that um, they'll, you know, they'll take a phone and they'll wrap a wire around it and put it in a bag and then they stick it on the park bench, right? So then we come by and see it and it looks like, we're, I'm not a bomb tech, so I have to call the special south and take a look at that. And we get that a lot and there's, there's really nothing to it except there was just a bunch of uh, parts kind of wrapped together yeah. with wires. So, yeah. 
There's a lot of resources out there. On my yeah. side, your side? Uh, on 9th, 9th and Sandy. Oh, I know. They shut down halfway down. Hmm. So, yeah, we'll see how. I have to go out and say the bomb, the bomb squad calls in the city are allowed because officers are, are taught to, we're not trained to assess that. The bomb techs are trained to assess those. So there's probably a bomb call one every couple of days um, in the city where they're going somewhere around where they come across. So it's a, hey, someone left that backpack right here in a you know, crowded area. And, and they come and assess it with their tools and make sure everybody's safe. So. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. And please feel free to have something to eat. And, uh, well, if it's okay, I, I, I have to run. I have a few more meetings. It's, it's, one, it's one of those days they kind of they stack me up with meetings, but um, I'm always around. We have my, my contact. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll get you the, the stuff for some too. You can Thank grab you. a sandwich to, take, to go. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We know. So, uh, uh, Ariana's not here, so you can do the marketing report. And the, uh, has been changed already so the logos on there and the new colors and the new fonts uh, that's just a, a quick up you know refresh with the new logo but the website itself is being audited by Haynes right now and there will be some recommendations to make it more user-friendly the map updated the map and the marketing of the district so there's two different maps that we're talking about one is the directory map that is a you guys have probably seen it's been around for a long time it hasn't been redone since before ace hotel came um, so it's a map of the district with some key highlights that's being redesigned and then we're also talking about creating what we're calling a development map which will show you know here's where the new residential is the is being built including anything that we know of that's recently opened and or is in the process of being constructed um, it'll include you know, the new hotels, the new residential, et cetera. Um, so all of that is being done. Um, and also sometime in the next two months, we should be seeing banner designs as well. Um, so there's a lot happening in the marketing realm that Ariana can <laughs> do a better job of, of reporting on, I think, than me. Um, Ariana and Jasmine are actually this week up in um, Walnut Creek <coughs> the California Downtown Association Conference. Learning lots of stuff. The other thing with the use of social media um, and how like Instagram is growing and her use of it. So she, I, I personally think she does a great job incorporating everything in the district, both new and old. Um, so that's been working well. I think was Facebook going down? And I don't know. Instagram, yeah. We have so. yeah, the numbers, but She's doing a nice job keeping up on the social media. You want to move on to the yeah. director's report? Um, a, a number of things happened over the past month, a number of meetings. Um, I'm glad Joelle is here because maybe you can even type in if you want. Sure. You don't have to, but if you want to. Sure. Um, yesterday, in fact, Joella from the um, CD14 uh, um, organized a, a very large meeting of city and state representatives regarding the encampments and the cleaning up of the encampments in the underpasses of the freeways. Um, and so there's a lot of conversations about what has happening in the other districts, what potentially is gonna happen in, in downtown LA, how we can work more effectively. Um, as you all know, the 10 freeway is our southern border um, and we often struggle with who should be cleaning up the garbage that's left there. Is it the city sanitation or is it the state? And so there was a lot of back and forth, um, and she is having another meeting in a couple weeks to continue to explore how to more regularly clean up those areas. Um, 
just an aside before I jump over to you, we do get per, um, we do get participation and help from city sanitation. In fact, this week they cleaned up 16th and San Pedro around that area. But but it's just you know it's just going to continue like you clean it up and then you have to go back so um, and clean it up again and there's a lot of trash as you all know so. Um, I don't know. I mean, I thought it was a good start, the meeting, but there's definitely a lot more work to be done. Um, yeah, it, it's it's really a, um, we're calling it a coalition task force to really address all of the entry points into downtown. Um, and so we're doing, a, the next steps are doing an audit of each one of those entry points, um, which bids they fall within um, sanitation and or uh, Caltrans. Um, and how we can really engage that in a very proactive manner over several per, uh, several uh, months, hopefully about three three to six months is the proposed plan right now. Um, and it would be the illegal dumping and trash pickup, but also the encampments um, to get it cleaned, get it uh, get services offered. Uh, so besides LASA, we would be engaging um, outside uh, service agencies to help with the homeless to get them in um, crisis uh, shelters. And then um, also look at the actual spaces and, and see if there's an opportunity to do rockscapes or um, additional lighting and what would that cost and what is what are our options. Um, so that's really the purpose of that specific coalition and yesterday was our first meeting. Next week we'll have, uh, or in two weeks we'll have our follow-up, um, but bringing all those folks to the table was a very um, interesting component. Um, but absolutely, and this goes to all of our uh, downtown needs, uh, sanitation is just unfortunately woefully unequipped to manage the full need of our downtown and the city as a whole. So um, I previously engaged Rena to help um, get a support from property owners to push in this coming uh, budget for the mayor's uh, the mayor's budget to increase sanitation's um, res budget so they can get the resources they need. Uh, the biggest challenge there, it's not just, okay, we have the money, let's hire. We've actually got to train, train the folks and they have to have inspector level folks that are like hazmat trained, which takes another so much time because then they can decide, um, you know, with the sharps and the needles and the hazardous way. So it's, it's a process, but it's finally all slowly starting to come together. Um, and I can speak from uh, on the council member side, he's taking a much more um, assertive role in um, combating uh, and making sure that we are taking care of not just our property owners, but our businesses and our employees, um, and still being compassionate to the homeless to uh, eventually fully be able to um, enforce 5611, uh, which is uh, where they need to uh, have the encampments down from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m., but we cannot do that until we have ample shelter beds and storage units available. Um, so that's where a lot of this initial work is to get those resources available. So it's actually in the works, it's in the planning stages. And the final piece of that is we also just had a huge meeting um, with the folks and um, we're starting the next piece of the puzzle, which is mental health, um, because we can offer these services, but if we miss that piece of the puzzle, we're not gonna we're not going to be able to, you know, so much is going, so much of our time and effort is going into this now that we need to make sure we, we address it. So that's our next piece. Um, but yeah, I kind of went off subject a little bit. That's, no, that's, that's okay. Fine. That's great. Um, we, and to Joella's point, so we did go to City Council Homeless and Poverty Committee and speak on behalf of increasing sanitation resources to the downtown. Um, and to really look at redirecting the way that it works. So making sure that where the most need is gets the most resources. Um, so we, we were there speaking on behalf of that. Um, we supported the El Pueblo temporary shelter mm -hmm. facilities, trailers. trailers that are being set up. Also the motel conversions, which are gonna allow some of the motels to be converted to um, transitional supportive housing. Um, we also, Randall talked a little bit about, I think we told you at the last meeting that we were touring with the fire chief to look at the fire risks that were associated with many of the encampments. Um, and as I said earlier, we've had about 70 fires, we've set around 70 fires last year alone. 
Um, most of those were, you know, dumpsters and trash cans and things like that. But um, ten or twelve buildings, thirteen, thirteen um, have been um, buildings have been impacted by the fires. So, and you guys all know about that. And so, we had a really interesting and great tour with them. Um, the chief actually came himself with two deputy chiefs. We toured the area, um, and they have some ideas for us on what we can do. We've got some informational um, flyers that we're going to be giving to owners to make sure that they protect their properties um, from possible fire risk. Um, we are He is thinking of using the Maple Alley model um, and seeing if there's a way to expand that throughout downtown, which is phenomenal because it's been really successful. Um, and then they also are getting our reports. We're actually providing reports to the fire department um, on how many fires we're getting. So a lot of the fires that we have, we put out ourselves. You know, the one in the trash can, we're just putting out because it's easy to put out. Um, but th so they're not getting a, a clear understanding of how many fires are happening. Um, we also met, um, also thanks to Joella, we actually met with Film LA recently with all of the downtown bits to try and look at, you know, there's the changing demographics of downtown are creating some friction between how filming is happening and what's happening with residential and also the business community. Um, and we're going to be looking at revising um, or updating the current conditions and um, regulations that exist for downtown LA. So that's happening as well, and we did bring up your point, Jessica. Um, so um, we felt really great about that meeting. Film LA is actually a really, we have had nothing but good results with them, just so everybody knows. Whenever there's been an issue, they respond like that. They're there for us. Um, where the challenges happen is usually not because of the permitting process, but because of a location manager that just isn't caring, maybe. Um, so, but Film LA really has been great about responding to that. Um, we spoke at the um, Metro Santa Ana branch on Monday, it feels like a month ago. On Monday, um, interesting, I have um, some concerns about it. They um, are proposing an east-west connector, but the east-west connector they're looking at is potentially along 8th Street now, which wasn't at all what we had what? talked about. What? I know. So anyway, there's more to come with that. Um, I don't know a lot of the details of where they're going. It was just kind of informational again, a public meeting. Um, I will have more information for you soon um, on that. But the, I mean, it's not a horrible thing that it's on 8th, but that is not at all what we discussed nor is it what South Park discussed or the Arts District discussed or downtown. I mean, so it was interesting. Um, and really not paying attention to the fact that we think most of the economic growth is going to be south of that. Yeah. Right? Um, and then also the objects of the Well, and the, trans the interconnection thing is on second. So it's like there's already options, but. Um, The, a couple of announcements. The annual meeting is May 24th. Um, we are inviting Brian Eck to present on the update, um, give us an update on where, or the status of DTLA 2040. We're also inviting, we're gonna be inviting all the different projects that are happening in the fashion district to exhibit, essentially, and so that you all and other property owners can come and see your plans, what's going on, ask questions about them. And we're hoping that, I'm looking at you guys, will participate because um, we get, you know, a lot of interest and in people really want to see what's happening. So that's um, May 24th. Treasures is May 17th. We do have a table, so I'll send out an email, but let me know if you want to attend. I, it's either eight or ten people, I can't remember, but I'll let you know. Um, yesterday, I was at a CCA meeting. We had a presentation on some possible legislation to update the handicap placards. You know how that's a really big issue here. Um, so we'll, that'll be coming, um, I think that'll be more in the forefront in the next couple of months. I have not yet seen legislation, but we, the city, LADOT, presented sort of on where they're coming from in terms of revenue lost and not ac and having really bad access for ADA compliancy for a lot of people mm -hmm. because of some of the um, 
the uh, abuse, exactly. Um, and um, I met yesterday with Ilsa Metchek. Many of you guys know her from the California Fashion Association, and she has a presentation that she would like to give on the state of fashion and how, and then based on her thoughts on that, how we think that will affect the, you know, what's going on at the ground level here. And I thought it would be really interesting. So it may be um, at the next meeting on April 26th. I just have to figure out the date. But that's my report. Okay. I think. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rena. Uh, any new business? Then I'm going to adjourn this meeting. <laughs> this is such a quiet meeting.